So I'm standing here at a cliff that leads up to the outcrop of the KPG boundary. All along this cliff side, at the top of there, you see there's a thick sandstone layer just capping this whole cliff all along here. Just below that, you'll see a black layered area of shale. You see a little white layer? That's the KPG boundary layer. That's it right there. So I'm going to climb up and take a closer look. So we're at Trinidad Lake State Park in Colorado. Uh, it's down near the town of Trinidad in southern Colorado. Uh, and I'm here because I came to see the KPG boundary, the extinction event 66 million years ago that ended the reign of dinosaurs and began what would become the age of mammals. And you can see it in the state park if you go back along a trail to here. I'm, I've climbed up a, a ways um, on a cliff, so it's a little dangerous to get out here. But once you climb up, you can see the actual extinction boundary. Right here is the boundary between the Cretaceous period below and the Paleogene period above. So this is the Mesozoic era, this is the Cenozoic era, age of mammals, age of dinosaurs. And this boundary separates them. This is the fallout from the impact of an asteroid that struck the Earth 66 million years ago. The location of impact we've pinned down. It's actually just off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. And it's uh, mostly underwater. Uh, but it's the location where that asteroid hit and that clay layer originated. So this is a layer of very fine grain ash and clay basically fine grain fallout particles from the impact. The shroud that was cast up into the atmosphere came down, collected up around the world. And whenever, wherever there was sediment being laid down at the time, in lakes or in shallow seas, um, it has the chance of accumulating this layer intact. And that's what happened here. So take a close look at this. This is very fine grained and thinly bedded material. It's just crumbling in my hands. This clay layer is pretty soft. It also crumbles easily. That material is rich in iridium, and everything else is pretty low in iridium by comparison. It's how you recognize it. I'd have to analyze it. You can't see it visually, but that's just what's in there. Above it, you see more thin beds, very soft shaley material. And then this continues up, thin beds of shale. And then this above this is massive sandstone. Above it, you still see the same material being laid down. So the environment didn't change. The physical environment was still an aquatic environment where you can lay down um, thin, shaley material. But above this was after the massive extinction. The extinction took place 66 million years ago, wiped out 70% of species on Earth, including all the large dinosaurs. The small dinosaurs survived, and of course we called them birds. This layer was first described in 1980 in a paper, um, a landmark paper, by Luis and Walter Alvarez, father-son team working in Gubbio, Italy, uh, where this layer is exposed. And they discovered upon examining it that it's rich in the element iridium. Iridium is a heavy element. It's low down on the periodic table. It's pretty rare in the crust of the Earth. The composition of the crust just doesn't have much. Most of that stuff on our planet is in the core. But it's fairly rich in meteorites and in asteroids. And they reasoned the... Uh, the Alvarez team, that this is rich in iridium, it's laid down around the world at the same time, and it's because of an impact, a catastrophic impact. It was controversial at the time when this paper came out, but since then we've realized that that's what's happened, we found the crater, we found the smoking gun. The asteroid hit at Shikshalub in Mexico, modern day Mexico, laying this ash bed down. Above it is the Cenozoic. The tertiary period, or actually today, no, we call it the Paleogene period, uh, the age of mammals, the age of dinosaurs, divided right there. One of the few places in the world you can see this up close. Trinidad Lake State Park in Colorado.